Um, I have very high anxiety right now, so I apologize if I seem very nervous and tense. You're fine. <laughs> Do you help your sister when she feels anxious? Yes. How? Whatever I can do. Um, help comfort her. We talk with her. Just general. Try anything to help her. Usually small fidget toys like Silly Putty help. Just to fidget with. Because I also have ADHD, and so that makes it kind of worse. Yeah, ADHD is not worse. <laughs> <laughs> what do you want the world to know about you? I want the world to know that I'm normal. I'm a normal person. I might look different because I was born with a genetic disease, disorder, but I'm normal. I'm just like everybody else, just like you. What is it like to have a twin sister? <laughs> <sighs> Very interesting. Uh, not many people get the opportunity to have the experience of a twin or a triplet or whatever. Um, so, twins are so close. Like, so close. They just have that bond that can't be broken. Tell me about your mom. My mom. <laughs> well, I grew up with my mom. Mm -hmm. And then I met her again in the summer of 2011, 2012. 2011. You can explain why, maybe you please. You can explain why, that's okay. Um, because earlier in the 2000s sometime, mm -hmm. my mom, uh, was on drugs and was addicted. Mm -hmm. And then in 2006, my grandmother and my grandfather took us, mm -hmm. me and my sister. I love you. So time went by. I went to school. Honestly, I kind of forgot that I had a mom for a while. <laughs> Mental health wise, I struggled with depression, anxiety, PTSD, and a few other um, diagnoses. But I have to find a way to keep pushing through all of this. She was and still is my biggest support, my biggest, tallest, best support. Oh. Don't cry. I don't want, I know, <laughs> I'm trying not to. <laughs> it seems like you really want her to know that. I remind her a lot. He does, he comes into my room and he's like, I just, I really want to let you know that like you're my biggest inspiration and I look up to you and you know like you've done things in life that I haven't been able to achieve yet and just never stop being yourself keep your heart as open as it is now and as kind and just keep living kindly and it's really nice to have him tell me that because I've never had, like, anyone say that to me, and <laughs> I just feel loved. Cool. And these aren't sad tears, she's very happy. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it's 
an overwhelming sense of love. What's it like to see your sister experience that overwhelming sense of love? Makes me happy. Makes me really happy because the world has so much bad people. People don't want to hurt other people, kill other people. We need more people to have that golden heart. Like her. I grew up being bullied. Awful. And... Years later, I still experienced bullying. But I approached it differently. I couldn't fathom the understanding of why he was being picked on. Which is why I was so overprotective when people would pick on him. I was like, there's no need for this. He's just like you and me. There's no difference. Just because he looks different <clears throat> doesn't mean he is. But he's different in his own sense and like, he's unique. What's the number one reason you wanted to share your story today? Not enough people understand Trija Collins syndrome. Not enough people know about it. I met people and I tell them about it. And they're like, what's that? I'm like, oh, you pay. So then we have to go and explain it all again. I just want to educate people. I want this video to get out into the world so that people can know what the syndrome is. Uh, my sister, when I was bullied, oh lord, she was there. Mm -hmm. Always. It's, I can't even tell you some of the experiences. Like, it's part of the reason why I'm so overprotective of him. Like, one time we were at a park and you know, in a neighboring town and there were kids being really mean to him and they were throwing sand in his face and you know, we were like, can you not do that? He can't breathe. Like, you can't be throwing sand in his face. And they just weren't leaving him alone when he was saying, leave me alone. So me being the protective, you know, twin sister, I protected him from that. And I was like, leave him alone. Like, seriously. What was it like for you when your mom re-entered your life when you were 10 years old? Confusing. I was very conflicted. My mom never really... I didn't have... Ugh. I didn't have a presence of my mother mm -hmm. in my life, so it was... The confusing. Yeah. I was happy! <laughs> but resistant at the yeah. same time. Mm -hmm. Scared. Yeah, not scared. trusting and you I mean he she should been right I mean who could blame him and for not trusting it wasn't for him to trust me it was for me to gain his trust again and that took a really long time but it's here and he trusts me to do things for him now like you know make sure that all of his medical stuff that he wants the doctors to know is taken care of and that they know exactly what he wants and what he needs and you know, we sit for hours sometimes in cars and doctor's appointments to just, you know, figure out the next step in Liam's better quality of life. And that's what this is, is getting him a better quality of life, a more confident outlook on himself. He's just a really awesome dude. Like, <laughs> he, once he's quiet at first, but once you get to know him, he's like one of the funniest, like, just honestly... A really good kid and I think that he's just amazing in all sense of who he is and who he's become I just think that it's taken a lot of hard work for him and I'm very proud of him it means a lot to me thanks for saying that he is kind his heart is big once you get 
once you get past it, you know, you're going to crack a little bit of wall, but once you take the time to do that, you've got a friend for life and it's one of the best friends you'll ever have. Do you agree with your mom? Do people have to work to be your friend? Yep. It's true. <laughs> I have a high defense system. I do. Because you know the way I grew up and bullying, I have yeah. to self-preserve. What's the best way for me to communicate with you? Typically, I can speak with you. But right now I'm struggling because I just had surgery. So um, I would say ASL is our go around with that <laughs> for right now. <laughs> what type of surgery did you have? I don't even know what it's called, but um, the surgery, it's where you take the jaw, you have to open up the whole bottom part and side here, I these scars, and there were prosthetics put into my face. What is it like communicating with ASL? Very handy. <laughs> ASL is, I don't know, I would say one language that needs to be taught more. It's not Spanish. I mean, no, I understand the importance of different foreign languages, but ASL, with how many deaf people there are here in the U.S., it needs to be taught more in schools, not just colleges, like high schools. You know, they have curriculums that re require a year of um, languages or two years or whatever they do. He's so smart. He can do amazing stuff on the computers. He's, you know, I mean, he's got a lot going for himself. It's just confidence. Let's bring up confidence and... I will say, I am smart. Yeah, extremely. I will say that. A beautiful writer. He writes beautifully. And just... I, but I did not put any effort in high school. So not it even, wasn't reflected there. No. I almost bailed out, honestly. That was depression and yeah. that. We worked through that. What's your biggest goal for the future? Help oh, kids. I want to I wanna become a counselor. Or maybe a doctor, actually. I basically grew up in a hospital, so I feel like a good foundation. I begged him to reach out to you last year. I begged him. I said, you need to reach out to him. No. And I he said, we talked about it a lot. You suggested it. And we and talked. suggested Chris. It. Yes, because it was so important. And I sent them an email. Yeah. I want to help kids because not enough people out there's not enough people out there to help and I think you are a big help Chris to help kids and to get their stories out there but you know there's adults there that need stories and they, they need to be shared and you we don't want you to be the only one out there doing that yeah definitely there needs to be a lot more people out there I don't want kids that are like four, five, and six to go through what I went through. When somebody insults me, I'm like, okay, whatever. I didn't hear that. I'm not going to let it bother me. But so when someone else gets insulted, I can't take it. I intervene. I'm like, no, nope, can't be saying that. What do you think when you can tell your sister's anxious? I notice immediately. Jump into action. Because I want to help her. I want her to be calm. I want to help her calm. And when we get, when she gets nervous, she makes stupid decisions. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm just like, nah, dude, can't do this. I try to protect her from that. Try to just work work through it, I guess. Usually the crazy decision is like, 
dyeing my hair. As you can tell, it's purple. I've dyed my hair every color of the rainbow. <laughs> what should a person know about communicating with another person who's using an interpreter? So the interpreter will always be looking at the deaf person. Well, maybe not necessarily my case. I'm a little bit of a unique case. Are you deaf? Uh, that's a hard question. I identify as hard of hearing because I have this. If I take this off, I am still, I can still kind of hear, but I, Tell people it's like you're underwater. It's muffled, it's muted, um, because there's no hole into my actual inner ear. So it's um, muffled. I was born with no ears. Well, outer ears, I guess. But the doctor said that my inner ears are perfect. I'm gonna sign. Then the interpreter speaks what I just said, and Chris can hear what the interpreter speaks, correct? Right. And that's how we do that. It's a, then Chris will say something, the interpreter will sign it, and then I can intake it with my eyes. If you had to introduce yourself to somebody meeting you for the first time, what would you say? I tend to say, hello, my name is Liam. This is my sign name. That's how you. And I said, do you have any questions? Because I understand that some people are curious. Why do you look a little bit different? Why do you have no ears? You know, why is your jaw different? Why is your face different? So I it can explain those things. And that's fine. That's fine with me. Typically, deaf people are very blunt, I guess. So some of this stuff might sound, ooh, that was bold, but it's fine for us. If you see something, you can ask about it, and that's okay. That's how deaf people talk. It's not an insult. It's, it's care and concern. What happened? And I'm sorry for hearing people that feel insulted by those things. That's not the purpose. It's our culture. Do you consider yourself part of the deaf community? Yes. Deaf and hearing community, but yes. Why do you prefer ASL? That's a good question. ASL is easier for me to interact when I speak because of how my mouth is and the cleft palate, I can't enunciate certain things appropriately. So when I do ASL, it's full freedom. I can sign however I wanna sign and it's intelligible. And I also just had surgery, so I can't move my jaw right now. Um, it's been reset, so I need to continue to stretch it out. Why do you love to teach people about ASL? Because <laughs> it's a very unique language. It's a very interesting um, topic to teach. And it's fun, it's really fun to see people want to learn to see them be able to produce the language. I meet with so many hearing people and they wanna learn, they're like, oh, can you teach me? And that's great. And I'm like, all right, let's do it. You and your sister are twins? We are. She's two minutes older. <laughs> does, she, does she hold that over your head? Um, yes, always. What does she say? Haha, uh, I'm two minutes older. <laughs> <laughs> you, you giggle when you talk about her though, so I can tell you love her dearly. Yeah, I do. I love her. She's my sister. She's a really good girl. Me and Liam didn't really like get along when we were young. Like we would argue, we would throw stuff at each other, you know, it was just like constant bickering. And as we grow, like grew older, 
we have gotten a lot more closer and that's what I really appreciate about our relationship is that now that we kind of have matured a bit and grown a bit, we were able to, you know, grow into a better relationship. I'm learning now that the one most important thing for me is to be kind and friendly. The world right now, you can see all of it. See how much bad is in the news. How many people are dying. Like, you know, the earth is changing. I mean, so much. One thing we need to keep the need to stay the same is kindness and support <clears throat> people who care what are you most proud of your mom for that she changed and she's sober from drugs and she was addicted for a while and a long time I know that addiction is a seriously hard thing and so hard to stop. She did it. She overcame it and she did it. <clears throat> Was the love of your children the driving force in that? 100%. I never stopped trying to get clean. It took me four and a half years from the day that I wasn't with them to the day I came back to them and I never stopped trying it's just really hard and especially when you have mental health issues and you don't always know the right way but yeah it was absolutely for the love of my children and for the love of myself just really needing something different in my life because nothing changes if nothing changes and um, it was time to change i am so extremely proud of how far you've come you have been through so much, like, more than I could, yeah, like, just you've been through so much and you've been so, through the fire, right? yeah, and you've just remained strong through it all, and, you know, I just Maybe think, I wouldn't have stayed strong without you, though. <laughs> I definitely wouldn't have stayed strong without you. <laughs> some disabilities can affect people and they can affect them a lot some people can't speak properly some people can't move like others do some people don't look the same as other people and you have to include them no matter who you are no matter who they are no matter the disabilities that there might be, whether it's rare, where, where it's from, you have to remember one thing. We are all human. We're all people. At the very least, we are all people. Whether people are deaf, different colored, maybe you're a black person, we're all people. We are human. We are equal. And I guess I think that love, we need to spread love more. Thank you. I agree. It was great to meet you today. Thank you.